Hello and welcome back to Ganesh Institute. So in today's video, what we are going to discuss is from linear algebra and that too vectors in the space of real numbers and complex numbers. Okay. So let's get started. We are taking our first real numbers and then we'll move forward with complex. If I ask you in terms of, you know, modern methods in mathematical methods and physics and all, what do you mean by scalar and vectors? You know, all those physical quantities which has which have magnitude only come under the category of scalar and then when we have magnitude as well as direction then we say that that physical quantity is a vector for instance if we talk about distance the path covered by an object that is a scalar quantity we will say 5 meter distance is covered by an object but when we say 5 meter north or 5 meter from A to B, then that direction, this arrow, it will represent that the direction is from A to B. Okay, it is a ray having end point and then moving ahead. So this magnitude plus direction is vector. Let's come to this topic. What is a linear array and a vector? If I ask you, let's say you are five students sitting together and you are asking each other that, I mean, about your weight, okay? So in KGs, you have found out that these are the data. Any random, let's say, you know, five weights are there. Now, if we have these weight in numbers and we denote them using some symbol, I'm supposing that all these numbers are taken from a category, a symbol W, for example. And I'm considering that all these, I'm giving them subscript, okay? This is W1, weight 1, W2, weight 2, weight 3. All these are weights, then W4 and then W5, okay? So this list when written as a value W and as a set, this list is called linear array or vector, okay? Moving ahead, what is Euclidean n space? Before going ahead, let's connect it with the concept of vector. If I ask you, you have two vectors and you have to add them. Let's say vector means direction. So there are two vectors, u vector and v vector. There will be a resultant vector we can represent it in the form of u plus v. This u plus v is a resultant vector and it will be considered as vector addition. Okay. Then another property of vector is scalar multiplication. If you have a vector u and if you multiply it with any real number, let's say k, then this k u will give you a product that will be having same direction as of the vector which is u here okay this is scalar multiplication now what is dot product let's say you have a vector u in the form of linear array okay then you have another vector v If you have to find out the product, the dot product, u dot v, that will be the multiplication of corresponding values, okay? A1, 
will be multiplied by B1, then A to B2 and they will be added up and so on up till n tuples. Okay? These are n tuples up to n time. When we say Rn, this is the space R. That means it will be having linear array of real numbers and those will be heading up till n. Okay? So it will become n tuples. So u dot v will be represented like this and it will be a scalar. It is also called a scalar or dot or inner product. Okay? Because it has magnitude only. If I have to represent it in the form of angle, then what I do? u dot v can also be written as u magnitude v magnitude cos theta. We'll talk about it. What does it mean later? Okay. So when we have vector addition, scalar multiplication and dot product of a space, then that space is considered as Euclidean n space. Okay. In case of real number, we call it as Euclidean n space. Okay. Next, what is norm? You must have watched that video of Gram-Smith orthogonalization process. If not, then please do check it. Now, what is norm? Basically, when we have two vectors, for example, A and B, and I want to find out the distance between them, then I'll say B minus A, final position minus initial position. But when we have norm in vectors, it is also a length not the distance but length of a vector and how do we calculate it it is represented as let's say i have u vector then its norm will be represented as this it will be having all the non-negative square root of u dot u okay how you will calculate it let's say i have u in the form of a1 a2 up till an okay so my u norm will be square of first number add square of second it will go up to square of an okay that means norm is the length of a vector which is represented as this square root of the sum of squares of the components of u okay if it is u vector if you have a unit vector, how can you prove a vector as a unit vector? If its norm comes out to be 1. Okay? If not, and question is asking you to find out a unit vector only, then how would you do that? You will do the normalization of a vector. Normalization. How do you do that? It will be represented as this form u norm um, this is u unit vector it will be u vector divided by its norm okay now this has become a unique vector and it will be having same direction as u okay so what is let us take some examples let's say I have u as 1 minus 3 4 2 what will be u norm square root of 1 square this is minus 3 okay minus 3 whole square plus 4 square plus 2 square so it will give you 1 plus 3 these are 9 4 4 are 16 2 to the 4 so 10 this is 20, 30, square root of 30, right? This is the norm. Now, can you tell me, is it a unit vector? Is this u a unit vector? No, because its norm is not equal to 1. And if you have to convert it 
into a unit vector, what would you do? You will apply this formula. Okay. Write u here. Okay. The components of u in four directions. Now, what is u norm? It is root 30. So, now your unit vector is 1 by root 30 minus 3 by root 30, 4 by root 30 and 2 by root 30. And if you find out its norm, it will give you 1. So, that's why it is a unit vector. However, it is made unit vector after normalization. Okay. Let's move on to next topic. What do you mean by squares inequality? Sometimes in your examinations, a statement can be asked out of it or in the form of the properties of norms or in the form of true-false. What is a squares inequality statement? What is it? Let's say I have, a, I have unit vectors u and v and I have chosen the space these vectors are in Rn real number n tuple space. Then squares inequality says that the magnitude of u and v, the dot product of u and v, is always less than or equal to the product of the norms. Okay, you can check that out uh, if you have. So how can you prove this? Let's say if I can do scalar multiplication and vector addition in it, you know that because it is a magnitude form, absolute value, it will always be greater than or equal to zero. Yes or no? So that u and v, the product, is always greater than or equal to zero if it is in modulus form. Yes or no? Now, can I write it in the form of T u plus v? Yes or no? T u plus v. Now, I have considered this as a separate form to show you that it is greater than or equal to 0. What I have done here is I have taken the product of scalar multiplication and vector addition. I have taken those two combination and I am I'm doing multiplication of them. Okay. To get this final result. Let's see whether we will be able to get it or not. Okay. If you multiply, Tu multiplies, Tu get multiplied with Tu plus V. It will give you T square U dot U plus if you see this is t square u square plus t u v plus t u v plus v square. Correct? So, uh, can I write it as 2 t u v? This is any random scalar. Okay. I am considering the dot product of vectors and then scalar is kept outside. Okay. Now, plus this is v square. It is greater than or equal to 0. Is it fine? Okay. Can I ask you what is u dot u? It is actually the norm. Because what do we do in norm? If I have to find out, if I have a vector a1, a2, its norm will be a1 square plus a2 square. Right? So actually we are doing u dot u. Right? Non-negative square root of u dot u is what? This norm square. Okay? Then what we have got here? 2t u dot v. And here, what is it? It is v square, which can be written as, this is actually v dot v. Can I write it v dot v? So, it will be v modulus square. Yes or no? It will be greater than or equal to 0. If I assume, let's say this is A, 
our a is norm square then 2 u dot v let's assume that this is our b and c is norm v square okay so this will be converted into this form t square a t square plus b t plus c greater than or equal to 0 okay now this is a quadratic equation it is coming out as greater than or equal to 0 if you solve it and if it is coming out greater than or equal to 0 we cannot say that it will be having this real roots yes or no now you must be wondering that if we have discriminant greater than 0 then we have real roots it is not discriminant it is the equation okay when you find out obviously it will be having two zeros because it is quadratic equation then you will take square root if you do completing square method you will do square root this will be square root of zero or any other number can be let's say if i'm adding to make it a perfect square then other number will go into onto this side and becomes negative so there will be no real roots for this and if there is no real roots what is the condition of discriminant discriminant has to be less than zero or less than zero yeah okay if it is less than zero what's the formula p square minus 4ac less than zero yes or no if roots will be equal then we can put equal correct now b square is less than or equal to 4ac what is b here we have assumed b is 2u dot v it's square less than or equal to 4ac a is u square and c is v square here yes now this is this becomes 4 u dot v this will always be positive so can i put absolute sign here less than 4 u square v square can i cancel 4 from both of the sides and then take square root what is left now this condition yes or no this is how you can prove squares inequality try to solve it on your own and please let me know if you have any doubts next next is another inequality minkowski's inequality you can call it minkowski also but one of the pronunciation is minkowski now this inequality states that again you have two vectors in rn space okay but now you have u plus v less than or equal to u norm plus v norm okay this is its case it is also called as triangles inequality what is it called just bear with me i'm writing triangles inequality okay what it how can we prove it let's take left hand side by squaring it now if we are squaring it can i write it as u plus v i mean you know just bear with me what is the definition of u norm what is the definition of u norm it is the square root of u dot u right so if i'm doing squaring both sides can i write it as this form so similarly i'm writing here u plus v u plus v because on left hand side i have considered u plus v whole uh, u plus v norm square right now if i have written it in this form expand it using the distribution 
u dot u plus u dot v plus u v dot u. So I can write it as 2 u dot v. Correct? Then v dot v. Now if I convert it into this form, u dot u will become, I mean this form. It will be norm square. Yes or no? See, up till here, we have equals in between. But what we want? An inequality, right? So, can I remove this? Can I remove this? Still, it will be and can put here inequality. Yes or no? You might ask why. Okay. Let's do step by step so that you can easily understand. Can I write it as u plus v? This is u norm square. This is v norm square. So this is u norm. This is v norm. Can I write it as this without removing to u dot v? Is it fine? Now, though these two are equal, but this square will always be greater. It will give you the positive value, right? And it will be having more value than left hand side. So u plus v norm, you can take square root both sides, will give you this form. Yes or no? So this is how you can prove Minkowski's inequality which will be required to prove some of the conditions of norms. Okay. Let's move on to next topic. How can we find out distance between vectors, angles between vectors and their projections on each other? Let's say I have two vectors. U and V. What is U here? 1 minus 2, 3. And what is V? V is 2, 4, 5. Okay. And I am supposed to find out distance, then angle, then projection. For distance, I told you earlier that if you have A and B two positions, and if you want to find out the distance, it will be B minus A, second minus first. But not simply this. You have to make it vector as well. So for that, just apply the same concept as of norm. So distance between U and V will, will be second position minus first position and its square plus 4 minus minus plus 2, then 5, minus 3 whole square. What it will give you? 2 minus 1 is 1, 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 are 36, 5 minus 3, 2, 2 is a 4, then root 41. Okay? This is the distance. This is how you calculate the distance, the difference and the norm. Okay? This is how you can remember. Okay. If you have to find out the angle, I told you in dot product that in dot product when you expand them, it will give you u magnitude v magnitude cos theta. Okay. Now, how can you calculate cos theta? Basically, magnitude is as similar to its norm. Cos theta will become u dot v divided by their norms. Yes or no? So what is the norm of u? Tell me. Square root of 1 square. I can't see the cursor. Just bear with me. Square root of 1 square minus 2 square plus 3 square. And here what is v norm? 2 square plus 4 square plus 5 square. By now you must know how to calculate the norm. So this will be 1 plus 2 to the 4 5 and 9 root 14. And this is 2 to the 4 plus 16 plus 25. 
Spotify. Right? So this becomes u dot v. That is, okay, we have to find out u dot v as well. So u dot v means corresponding values, multiply them and then add. 1, 2, 1 times 2 is 2, minus 2, 4 is 8, plus 5, 3 is 15, so 9. Correct? So the dot product is 9. Just bear with me. Then u and v, root 14, root 45. You can calculate it further. So your theta, your angle will be cos inverse of this value. 14 into 45. Right? Now what is left? The projection. Projection of one vector on other can be found out using Let's say I'm finding out projection of u on v. Projection of u on v. How can we do that? u dot v. You have to place the norm and here the vector itself. So what is u dot v? We have found out here. 9 dot v vector. What is v vector? 2, 4, 5. What is V vector's norm? It is 45, but it's square. Square root of 45 is 45. So 9 fives are 45. So now the new projection and the projection vector will be 2 by 5, 4 by 5, and then 5 by 5. That is 1. Right? I'm hoping that you are getting what I'm telling you. Now sometimes you may be asked to find the unit tangent vector when function will be given you in the form of parametric uh, form. So for that it is unit tangent vector. First of all for tangent vector you have to differentiate the function. Okay. So let's say if I have to find out tangent vector Vt. I'll do the differentiation of the vector given. So, what's the differentiation of sine theta? It's cos. Then for cos, it's minus sine. And then for t, it's 1. This is vector tangent or tangent vector. Now, I have to find out the unit tangent vector. So, for that, I need to check whether its norm is coming out as 1. Because if norm is coming out as 1, it itself is a unit vector. But if not, then I have to do what? Yes, normalization of vector. So, how can I find this? Cos square, how can I find this? Cos square t plus sine square t plus 1. Cos square theta plus sine square theta is 1. It is root 2, which is absolutely not equal to 1. So, that means it is not a unit vector. We have to do further hard work normalizing. Okay, so for normalizing, what do we do? We put that vector and divide it by its norm. Yes or no? So that vector is cos t minus sin t comma 1. And then what's its norm? Root 2. So the new vector is cos t by root 2 minus sin t by root 2. And 1 by root 2. Is it fine? Let's move on to next concept. What are spatial vectors? Okay, you can see it has the association. The root cause, the root word for this is space. Right? So, we are talking about R in space, if we talk about R3, then we have three vectors. One is in X direction, another one is in Y, and then third one is in Z direction. The direction X, the vector in X direction is called I vector, Y is G, and Z is K vector. 
we can write the coordinates or elements also this is because it is on the x axis so x component will be there it is a unit vector so one other two factors vectors will be zero here y has to be there x and z zero and for k that is z z has to be one rest all will be zero okay if i ask you about dot differentiate between two products dot and cross what's the difference it is a scalar or inner product it is a vector or outer product so now by now you must have understand you must have understood that what's the difference between scalar and vector we have direction in vectors whereas in scalar we have only magnitude okay now let's say i have 2i 3j 4k and minus 3i 4j 6k these are two vectors u and v what's the dot product now just multiply the corresponding values 2 multiply minus 3 is minus 6 plus 4 is a 12 6 4 is a 24 so this is how you can find out the dot product whereas when we have to find out the cross then it's not as simple because cross has direction and if you are saying a cross b then it is not equal to b cross a because because if you are going clockwise here then minus sign will tell you that the direction has been changed now it's become anti clockwise let's say i'm starting in this vicious circle i mean not vicious virtuous circle and this starts from i then j then k you can remember this trick that if we have dot because direction doesn't matter so a dot b is equal to b dot a in real space but when we say cross then direction changes so as the sign so if i have i cross j i cross j will give you k okay then j cross k will give you i and then k cross i will give you j and if you want to find out the converse j cross i it will give you minus k k cross j will give you minus i and so on okay so remember the significance of sign and direction as far as cross product is concerned when we say vector cross or outer product okay i have explained to you how can you calculate uh, the dot product how can you find a dot product now it, it is the time to calculate the cross how can we do that see let's say i have this vector i have 2i minus 3j plus 4k 3i plus 5j minus 6k okay so there are two ways one way is write your ijk in matrix form and then x y z component likewise 2 minus 3 4 then 3 5 and minus 6 then this u cross v will be i then just like you do in determinant forget about the row and column in which i lie lies okay so what is left this bit find out is determinant minus 6 into minus 3 18 minus is in formula 5 4 is 20 okay 
then comes minus sign why because you know the position of matrices the elements of in a matrix a11 that means first row first column a12 a13 then second row second column of oh, second row first column second row second column second row third column third row first column third row second column third row third column so wherever the sum of rows and columns is what odd then on expansion you have to place minus sign there okay so these two will have the same sign positive whichever sign is being given but here opposite sign will come so minus j vector i am putting j cap because it is unit vector now forget about the rows and columns in which j lies so here what is left j here and here so 6 twos are minus is in formula 4 these are 12 then k vector forget about this bit 5 twos are 10 minus minus plus 3 these are 9 and you can simply solve it right uh let me solve it for you minus 2 i cap minus 12 12 3 4 but it will give you plus because here is minus sign then 19 k okay you can find out its magnitude by i mean modulus uh, the norm by simply doing the square of respective elements correct the other way of doing it or remembering it like a shortcut what you can do if two vectors are given to you make a matrix a rectangular matrix this time okay you have two vectors right so there will be two rows and three columns because you have three unit vectors i j k okay so whichever values are given to you just write them write them down 2 minus 3 4 in the same order then 2 oh no it's 3 5 minus 6 okay now your u cross v will be you have to firstly leave first column just first column okay what is left this is 60 is a 18 minus 20 correct i okay then minus j just forget about second column so minus 6 times 2 minus 12 minus 3 times 4 is 12 plus k cap forget about third column So five twos are ten. Minus minus plus three twos are nine. So you can see it's similar to what we have got earlier. Correct? I'm hoping that you you are very much clear about this bit. Okay? Let's move on to the next part. Now so far we have discussed about real space, but what about complex space? It's simply. when we have a complex number in the form of a plus iota b where a is real part and b is imaginary part and you know very well that iota is root minus 1 correct now you know they also follow all those properties except Here u dot v is not equal to v dot u. It is equal to u dot v conjugate. Do you know what is conjugate? Let's say I have u as two plus three iota, and then v is three minus five iota. Then u dot v. Tell me what is u dot v? Two plus three iota into three minus five iota. 
So 2 times 3 is 6, minus 2 5 is a 10, plus 3 3 is a 9, minus 5 3 is a 15 iota square. So 6, you know, you have iota as root minus 1, so iota square is minus 1, squaring both sides. So minus 1, minus minus plus, this gives you 10 minus 9 is minus 1 iota. So 15 and 6, 21 minus iota. This is your u dot v. Okay. This is how you can calculate u dot v. Basically, you can see that u dot v is u into v conjugate. Remember this bit. I have placed here 2 plus 3 iota into 3 minus 5 iota. This is not the dot product. It is simply multiplication. Okay. Then I have to find out the dot product of two vectors in complex space. The formula is u dot v conjugate. That means one vector multiplied, multiplied by another one's conjugate. Even if it is u dot u. That means u norm. The square root of u dot u is u norm, right? That u dot u is also u into u conjugate. Getting my point? For instance, let me give you an example. There is a difference between simple multiplication and when they say inner product. That is dot product. In dot you have to use the formula this one. Okay, let's say you have u as 2 plus 3 iota as x component, 4 minus iota as y component, 3 plus 5 iota z component. This is a linear array of u vector. Then another one, 3 minus 4 iota, 5 iota, 4 minus 2 iota. This is the complex space of 3 a dimension, with 3 dimension, okay? So what would you do? You have to find out u dot v, correct? This is not simple multiplication, the dot product itself. So it will be, let's say this is u1, u2, u3, v1, v2, v3. So it will be u1 into u1 conjugate plus v1 sorry u2 into v2 conjugate plus u3 into v3 conjugate okay it will be 2 plus 3 iota into v1 conjugate conjugate means when you change the sign of imaginary part only imaginary part okay so it is 3 minus 4 iota so it will give you what 3 plus 4 iota, right? Plus u2, which is 4 minus iota into v2. It is imaginary part, right? 5 iota is imaginary. So change its, change its sign. Plus u3 multiply conjugate of v3. Now you can simply multiply. Okay, you can simply multiply how? 2 multiply 3, 2 multiply 4 iota, 3 iota into 3, 3 iota into 4 iota. Okay, which I showed you earlier. And remember, when you have to find out u dot u, what would you do? It is simply the magnitude of, do you know how to find out? Hold on. This is how you can calculate u dot u. So, the magnitude of each part. Now, how can we calculate the magnitude modulus of z? It is root square of real part plus imaginary part. Okay? So, it will give you root 2 square plus 3 square. Now, it's square. Don't forget that. 
only magnitudes value is 4 square plus 1 square, then the formula has square as well. Root 3 square plus, this is 5, right? 5 square, whole square. So, square root will be cancelled with square. What is left? 2 to the 4, 3 to the 9. 4, 9. 4, 4 is a 16 and this is 1. 17. 3 to the 9, 5, 5 is a 25. 9, 25. Add them up. 22, 27, 27, 47, 57, 7, 64. Okay? So this is u dot u. And what is the norm now? Square root of u dot u, that is square root of 64, that is 8. I'm hoping that you are very much clear about the basics of vectors when it comes to Rn and Cn states. We will proceed with this series with further topics. So stay tuned for that. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe my channel. Till my next video, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.